July is looking to be stacked with some pretty great game releases, and they're basically going to be begging you to open your wallet and cough out that well-earned dough. And if you're not careful, that can cause some real problems for your bills. But that's where we come in to help. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and today we're going to be sharing with you what we think are going to be some of the best games coming to the Switch this month. Let's see what you got, July. Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered? Re Remastered. Remastered is coming to the Switch on July 2nd. As you might be able to tell from the title of this game, it's actually a remaster of a third person action game from the PlayStation 3 and 360 era of games. It offers an expansive story in a huge, just ginormous open world full of stuff to blow up. And the physics system is just completely off the wall. This might sound like a weird comparison, but if you enjoy all the weird stuff you can do with Breath of the Wild and its physics system, you'll probably really enjoy this game. A game that's sort of a first of its kind for the Nintendo Switch, also launching on July 2nd, is Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. And coming from the Game Grumps gang means that this game is going to be absolutely ridiculous. They've designed a game where you simply get to create and play as a dad, and then you get to seek out and swoon other dads. And let me tell you, this, this game isn't all just a dating sim. There's many games too, some of which are new to this Dad Rector's Cut version of the game. And if you're a fan of the Game Grumps, you'll be happy to hear that they did a bunch of the voice work in the game as well. And surprisingly, with all the innuendos and things that they managed to sneak into this game, it still only nabbed a T rating. Just how saucy can they really even get? And then launching the day after on July 3rd is Luca Born of a Dream. It's a single player action RPG that caught my eye almost immediately. Screenshots just don't really do it justice. Seeing it run in action is where it really shines. And while its hand-drawn art style has a sort of chaotic, messy nature to it, you can tell it was deliberate. And the story looks to be fairly deep as well. You seem to be trapped in this sort of dreamlike world, fighting off your worst nightmares. But it seems like there's others trapped in this nightmare along with you, so I'm curious to see how that's going to play out. It's given me some serious Undertale vibes, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one. Clannad is one of the saddest and greatest animes to ever exist, and for that sole reason, I had to put it on this list. Now, while the anime is one of my favorites of all time, I can't necessarily vouch for the game, as I've never played any of its previous versions. But based on the gameplay we've seen, it looks to be a bit more mature than the anime ever was. So if you're looking for a dating sim with a good story, or if you're a fan of the anime, you might want to check this out. I would definitely research it before just diving in, based on my recommendation. The anime, like I said, is amazing, and it will make you laugh and cry more than anything else, but the game, we'll find out. Switch owners have been asking the question for what feels like years or decades, centuries? What exactly is even left of Edith? What Remains of Edith Finch finally arrives on the Switch on July 4th of this year, and boy, this game just can't stop winning awards. And it's probably gonna win more with the Switch launch. You play as a girl named Edith. She's the last of her family line and has traveled back to her family's estate to figure out why she's the last remaining member of her family. You'll get to sort of relive their memories, but through her up until their grisly demise. It sounds like a perfect fit for Switch and I'm dying to get my hands on this one. <laughs> see, see what I did there? And then on July 4th, not only are we getting the new season of Stranger Things, we're also being treated to the launch of a new game based on its events, and it's simply titled Stranger Things 3 The Game. It's an old school adventure beat em up style game that's full of puzzles for two, and it looks to be channeling some old school goof troop slash zombies ate my neighbors vibes. You'll be able to explore the town of Hawkins alone or with a friend as up to 12 of the show's favorite characters. And hopefully Steve and his lovely baseball bat is one of them. Now I wonder if you're supposed to binge the show or play the game first. Or maybe you could do both. Like maybe you could watch a bit of the show and then pause it and then play some of the game up until the point that you've watched the show. And then you could pause that. On the 9th of July, we're getting an M-rated pinball game. And I'm not talking like Devil's Crush levels of maturity. 
This game takes the ball in a different direction. We're getting Senren Kagura Peach Ball. It describes itself as a sexy pinball game. The girls of Senren Kagura have been tricked into thinking they are all animals, and the only way to snap them out of it is apparently to smack them with pinballs. So if this looks like your cup of tea, go for it. Then the day after on the 10th, we're getting treated to a game with a classic idea in mind, Soul Seraph. Taking inspiration from games of old, specifically one you might have heard of called Act Razor, hmm? You'll play as a godlike character fighting enemies in 2D hack and slash style levels, but then in between those levels, you'll have to protect the people and their settlements with some good old tower defense gameplay. From the way the character jumps to the way it swings its sword, this really is a spiritual successor to Act Razor. Nothing has really tried to replicate this sort of mashup this closely before. And if you're a fan of this style of game, you'll want to keep this on your radar for sure. Eagle Island takes flight on July 11th, and surprisingly, you'll play as a boy and his owl friend, not an eagle. However, you'll embark on an epic quest to recover your friend who's been snatched away from you by an evil eagle. See, it, it all makes sense. Your main method of attack seems to be your owl friend which can be used almost like a boomerang. Throughout the game, you'll collect feathers and ruins, which can be used to upgrade you and your owl's abilities. And with a system like the Switch, you're probably used to hearing the words procedurally generated and Metroidvania. But don't let that stop you from checking this one out, as it looks to be shaping into quite the adventure. Also on the 11th comes Blazing Contra. Blazing Chrome, a classic run-and-gun style shooter full of bugs and cyborg brains for you to blast sky high. But guns aren't your only weapons, as you and a friend can crush enemies on hover bikes, and you'll even get to fight with giant mechs. It looks to use a power-up system similar to that of Gunstar Heroes, if you're familiar, where you can stack and blend power-ups together to create new powerful ones. I could be wrong on that, but if anything's for sure, it's that this game is extremely over the top. And if the Contra Collection gave you some good old kicks of nostalgia, give this a go and let us know what you think when it comes out. On the 12th of July, we've got Dragon Quest Builders 2. And as you can tell, it borrows a lot from Minecraft, but tosses a good old Akira Toriyama spin on the art. The sequel is looking to build off everything it learned the first time around, and is bringing a few new features to the table as well, one of which being multiplayer. The original caught a lot of flack for not having it, and it just felt like it would have been a perfect game for it. But those of you that have been wishing can rest easy now. And if you have save data on your Switch from the first game, you'll get some fancy exclusive gear in the new one. And then on that very same day, we're also getting God Eater 3. Now, this is the first time we've seen a game from the God Eater series hit a Nintendo platform in the West. So to give you a brief explanation, it's basically anime Monster Hunter. You're given a number of different weapons and fighting styles to choose from, and with them, you'll be tasked with tackling big creatures known as Aragami. But you don't have to fight them alone, as you and up to three other friends can fight the monsters together. And for the first time in the series, you're able to dual wield weapons. So in the end, if you're a fan of Monster Hunter and are looking for something new, you might want to give this a spin. Oh, and there's even a demo you can download on the eShop right now. Another game launching on the 12th is Streets of Rogue, a roguelite twin stick shooter that takes place on the city streets rather than inside of some dusty dungeon. Each playthrough will be different thanks to its procedurally generated worlds and the way that the NPCs fill it out. The game is full of character types to play as with their own unique abilities and missions. So whether you're playing as a firefighter trying to save the lives of many, or as a wrestler trying to break the backs of plenty, no run will ever be a boring affair. It's been years since we've had a Marvel game in the style of Ultimate Alliance, and on July 19th, we're finally getting a new one. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order lets you pit your ultimate team of heroes against Thanos and his cronies to stop him from world destruction. Coincidentally, this doesn't really tie in with the Avengers movie, it actually tells its own unique story. I had the chance to play this briefly at E3, and even though I did a very, very bad job, I still had a lot of fun with it. 
It reminded me a lot of the days of playing like X-Men or just all those Konami style street beaters back in the day. You could just jump in and drop out whenever you want. The game supports up to four player co-op. So if a boss is giving you too much of a hassle, you can bring in some friends for support pretty easily. I'm still bummed that my neighbors in Raven Software aren't working on this one, but it looks like Team Ninja's still doing a pretty good job. And then on the 26th of July comes Wolfenstein Youngblood. The sequel, er, sort of spin-off to Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus? BJ Blatskowitz has gone missing and it's up to his two deadly daughters to track him down. You'll still see a lot of the same straightforward FPS gameplay you're used to from the previous games, but new is the addition of customizable gear and co-op gameplay. If you feel like tackling Nazis alone, your twin sister can just be controlled by the AI. And for only 30 bucks, this sounds like a no-brainer if you're a fan of the series or just FPS games in general. Also launching on the 26th of July is Kill a Kill If, and I feel it just comes a little too late. The original anime aired back in 2013, but I guess it's better late than never, I suppose. The game is a 3D arena fighter, similar to the likes of the Naruto Ultimate Ninja games, and is host to a slew of playable fan favorite characters. All the game's cutscenes are also remade within the game's engine, and they do a great job of retelling its crazy story. Now I know I said this game is arriving a little late in my books, but when are we going to get a Gurren Lagann Musou game? Or even just give us some Gurren Lagann DLC characters, I want to play as Kamina and Simone. And the final game on our list, also launching on the 26th of July, is Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now, the world has been waiting for Fire Emblem to return to consoles for quite some time now, and this new title appears to be shaping up quite well. And whether you're a hardcore permadeath purist, or you're looking forward to forging new bonds within the confines of the school, it looks like this game is going to cater to every type of Fire Emblem fan. I'm just still over here trying to decide which house to pick. Gosh, or where am I going to get all the time to play this game? What is this? this comes out in a month? Guys, I'm gonna have to take some vacation. <laughs> and there you have it, some of the best looking games we could find coming to the Switch in the month of July. Feel free to let us know in the comments below which games you're most looking forward to. And if you enjoyed this video, why don't you tap that like button in the upside down, subscribe to Nintendo Life, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we release new videos. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Oh,